Oh, yeah. Please. Woo! Say, Robbie. I said that thing is a thing of beauty. All right, guys. This episode, lots of stuff happening at the shop. Uh, Saxon out of town. We got the 2.0. We're getting ready to take that to the track. We got the Durango progress. I mean, there, there's just so much crap going on. But we are going to show you or tell you a way that you have a chance to win a free entry to Sick Week. Sick Week sold out in three minutes last year, and there's already guaranteed people in the 100 fastest as well as winners of other events get a um, get an entry. So it's going to be even harder to get in. But we've got a way that you can win. Uh, free entry to Sick Week later on in the video. Stay tuned, guys, and take a look at what's going on around the shop. Man, I need a bigger damn hammer. <laughs> for real. Look, you need a 20 pound. I need a big boy for this. Hey. What are you doing? Kevin, everybody, it's Kevin! Woo! Oh my IT. gosh. <laughs> IT is mad at me for making so much noise. <laughs> it's very hard to talk on a phone. <laughs> meeting with IT and come to an agreement that they don't disturb me when I'm beating stuff out. <laughs> don't disturb me, Kevin. I didn't get a, hey, Bob, on that one, no, did I? No, what no. in the hell are you doing? You can see that Tom's going to lose his office because, watch the door. Oh, man. <laughs> Tom's Tom's office is on the other end of the building. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right they there. should swap. Yeah, Kevin's right there. Okay. So Bobby and I had a little talk for the last two days. But because the dilemma's been how to do the chassis in this and whether or not do we try and make it like 2.0, a pro mod chassis with a body on it, try and fill it up. Do we try and make it like the ship box, which is pro mod chassis but still stretched out and still fills the whole body um, we're hoping to get back seats in this thing don't know if that's going to happen because just based on taking some of the dimensions off of the ship box and the dimensions we have to work with here but we're going for style and quick over no style and really quick right right so more functionality so, yeah, I mean, like I said, we're hoping to keep, Bobby said he's gonna hide all the bars. So like when you look at this, <laughs> you're not even gonna see the funny car case. Not even the funny car, I'm gonna get it between. It won't right even, there. that's gonna be, yeah. The pillar like, will cover it, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be ultra tangy. <laughs> but idea being like with any of this stuff is that, I mean, you're dealing with, you're dealing with your dimensions and you gotta fit the, you gotta fit all the bars in there that have to go in there, but you also have to, trying well you don't have to but we're trying to fit four people in there possibly so we don't know if that's going to work but when you look what you have to work with to get the thing on the ground and you think you have unlimited room when you look at this big old box and then as we start to like figure out where bars are going to go and where stuff's going to go like the room shrinks quickly but that's that's the llama bobby is laying bars today 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 Today, shit is gonna happen. All right, so. Got the plates? You said you got that plate in the machine? Yep, running this one right now. Cool. And then you said this is what? Top fuel? Uh, this is the Pro Mod okay. alcohol idler, so it's the same thing that we'd run on any screw blown or roots blown Pro Mod or tractor pull or anything that's not a top fuel. The only difference is the top fuel guys on the back plate have two little ears for a long snout support rod because they're real hard on stuff, obviously. Very similar though. And the snout support rod goes to where? All the way up uh, to? Yep, they have basically two long hymed rods and there's two clevises and they 
connect it to this idler plate and they put a little bit of tension in it. Get the belt even tighter? Is uh, that the to stop idea? It from or flexing the oh, snout from just it pulling the tries to pull it down, yeah. So the manifold has an ever so slight lean back to it also, about thirty thousandths. Okay. Same everything else is the same though. You'll still load it up the same way. Um, all the, the pulleys are the same. We have some shims if you know you decide you want to move the belt, say eighth of an inch back, forward or in the middle. Now is this the bottom pulley that we're thinking or? Uh, yeah, this is the bottom pulley we ordered and then this is the uh, blower pulley we ordered that is three teeth larger than this one here. So this is all the paperwork we have on our overdrives and our center to centers when we figured that out. I think we're spinning it like 40 over, 30 over something, something pretty slow. Okay. So this and we think that's not going to be too much for this? No, that was kind of right about what we thought for maybe your power goals and keeping it pretty reliable. What'd you say, Robbie? I said that thing is a thing of beauty. So that's the cam tunnel finished. That is the cam tunnel finished. Always hot. Edit that part out. Why? So he didn't finish. I thought he was finishing the side. That that's on the rotisserie. Gotcha. But it goes up on the rotisserie. So to finish that, but it'll have the same finish as all that. Right. See, like these are the water jacketed inside. It'll have the exact same finish. Yep. As all of this in here. Now has this been connected all the way down? No. That's on the. That's on the once it gets up on the rotisserie. Gotcha. I thought he'd finish that before we went on vacation, that part of it. What? This stuff here. Oh, so. no, no, because you can't get to it with the clamps in the way. Gotcha. So that's when that plate will go on. And so this end's plug. done, that end's done. Yep. Oh, this already has the cut for the this. rear. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Where are we at on caps? We ain't done the caps yet. Did you bring the caps? Yeah, I got the caps for you. Okay. Right I was telling him about that. But yeah, no, that was because we can't reach that on the plate like it is, but he could get in here. But we're done here. Yes. The, we're done there. the cams holes done all the way. The oil galleys, so that's for all the snap rings and O rings and all the other shit that go in there. Um, and then yeah all the head bolts are tapped oh these are all done too yeah yeah they're all tapped done so literally we're done with yes those three sides plus front side back front side, side and back side we just got to get it on the rotisserie and do the bottom and the sides. But the, the hard shit is done. Yes. Well, the hardest one was this. So, in, and we've, the cam tunnel, so that's consistent all the way. Yes. And it didn't, didn't waver, it didn't flex no. at that end. No. Like even when it made the transitions. No. So, no, actually, so this block had all the interrupted cuts when right. we did it. And it was it came out perfect like that. So the, the block that's in there won't have any interrupted cuts. So we know that's going to come out. And what's the reason to do it? Because that went to heat treat. Yep. And all of this work was done before we did the finished cam haul. So we rather do it without the interrupted cuts. So that's why we're doing it now. Gotcha. I mean, now are you guys doing the crank? Yeah. Now too? Yeah. So the this, crank, the crank has to be machined. It can't be. Yes. So, but the crank will be finished. This side of the crank will be finished in the machine. Right. Before the, the bottom gets cut off. Yes. So it'll be going through a solid hole. So 
So this boring head isn't good enough to go through this one for the no. crank no. halfway? The roughing head is... No, no, this. no, I want it to go to do this half. Can it oh. do that half? It did do that half, I think. No, it didn't. I, no, it didn't. You can't it do didn't. that when there's only one side. Yeah, you can. You can? Yes. How? Oh. It, it's in a sense just like as an interrupted hole. See how where the lifter holes are and stuff? It, it's in, just an interrupted hole. They could sit there. Paul could do that. Why you but he would rather that? do it with the, with the cap on. Gotcha. But, yes, we could actually cut that. With that boring head? Because yeah. I thought we'd have to cut it the other way, no. just come down and just cut it. Yeah. So have you seen these, this tools? I've seen tools before. No, you ain't seen tools like this before. This big, this big. Yeah, you ain't seen them tools. Check one, check two, check one, <laughs> check two. Drango project, as it moves on and everything, uh, continues to evolve so last time you saw the Durango we had it gutted we had what we thought was going to be the stance for it and then last Friday night last Friday night well today is Monday so just Friday night we went through trying to finalize everything Bobby had some bars laid out in there like estimated where the floor was going to be where that stuff was but we keep going over to this eight inch car and we keep looking at some of the stuff that Richie did in here and we compared a lot of stuff and what's crazy is that same height this car is roughly as that this is actually the ship box is actually wider than the durango which i didn't think i thought all the newer cars are wider than the older cars everywhere but um same thing with a width difference there and as we look at the layout to try and figure different things out but then friday night as i alluded to a little bit ago Friday night we looked at it and we didn't like the stance. Well, what we actually did is we started measuring um, where the engine would sit. So, we gotta grab a tape measure here. Oh, here's a tape measure. Here's what we know. We know from the crank center line to the blower pulley center line is 25 inches. Well, the other thing is the crank should never be more than 12 inches off of the ground. And that has something to do with whatever, the way they wheelie or whatever. I'm not, as Bob would say, I'm not the freaking engineer. Like, I'm not anything, I'm just the idea guy. So, Bobby was, the, are you an engineer today, I'm Bobby? I'm a painter today. Oh, he's a painter today. I'm a painter today. Okay, well. Or wood so I can't ask him any questions about this because when he's in painter mode, he doesn't know anything about <laughs> engineering. Maybe so. plumbing. <laughs> I'm actually in intercooler mode right now. So, either way, we take from the table right now and we say, 12 inches, then we take the 25, that gives us, what's 12 and 20? Oh, you can't, you're not in your mathematician mode, are you? No, 37, 37 inches. is what I would have came up with being a painter, but. So there's 37. So that is the pulley on the blower. Um, and then we know we got 15 inches above that, which would take us to 52, would be the top of the hat. So when we looked at this Friday and started mocking this stuff up, that number was, well, the body sat different. It sat three inches higher than this. So if I just take three inches off and I say 37, but now I make that 34, that makes that the pulley on the blower, which doesn't even come above the hood. You add the 12 to the top of the hat and that's our 46 right there. So, yeah. So therefore, that was the top of the hat. So we gained three inches by lowering the body three inches. And to do it, we took the rockers off. So as you can see, now the stance is a lot better. We only got the front tire in there, but lowered it down to where basically now the top of the rim is right there at the fender. To where obviously all this was three inches higher, but to get three inches off of this, the rockers had to come off so they can be closer to the ground. So. That was the way to cheat it to get the engine higher, which gave us three more inches. But then, is Bobby, can you go into engineer mode for a second? Right, maybe. Let's see. Right. I'll give it a try. We got to open the other door. So as Bobby will show you, it worked out well because the floor across bars, all that would have had to have been where those bars are, probably would have still been the same, but they would have had to go three inches higher up 
to tie into the body to where now it's such a lot closer. Bobby, you can explain that dilemma. Oh, okay. So we didn't I didn't want the car when you stepped in to actually drop down so to keep the floor more flat and less material up above all the four linking stuff is in a much better position so things we want to we kind of want to put a set fourth second seat in here if we can we're not really to the point to know that yet but well, and part of it too, four they were doing because of, with everything in here, and I guess, I guess whatever, we had Skinny over here, and Skinny ex described to us exactly how to build this as a pro mod. Then we slept on that for a night and said, unfortunately, we don't want it to be a pro mod. We want it to be quick, but we don't want to sacrifice that much to make it into a full pro mod. So that's where, what are we at? Engine to back in to the front. We're at 90. Skinny said you cannot do anything more than 86. So he started at 84. 82. 82. 82 is the, no, the best number for a blower motor. But so, and then he let us get to 86. We haven't told him we went to 90 now. So right. But Aiden's car 92. So that's obviously turbo car versus blower car stuff like that. But to make accommodations for the body and to better fit it, and there's a. Uh, and like I said, with the goal, if we went, if we went with the 84, or the 86, we'd have no prayer of a back seat. We just have to give up on it. So by getting those four extra inches, that's four extra inches. It basically works out in this exact area. To Plus be the, the main hoop won't be so there. You're going to be six or eight inches. Only on the, the driver's back. side, though. Just on the driver's side, and put it, put it, put it across the on angle. So I guess we could try that. Oh. Maybe I don't. I don't think it's a rule. Well, because it's only got to come out around the driver, passenger doesn't matter. So, so either way, Bobby started laying in bars in this thing. We came to that final conclusion of where we dropped it at. Um, that happened Friday night, and here we are Monday morning. And Bobby did all this stuff. He came in at nine, and it's <laughs> noon now. <laughs> but I was here yesterday. No, no, no. You weren't no, here no, yesterday. no. Yes, I did. But. Um, so yeah, so Bobby was here yesterday. He was here early today, trying to get, because obviously we got a deadline to make this thing um, presentable. And then now, uh, what about water? How are we going to get water in and out of this? Um, so my understanding is there's going to be an AN bung. You'll have to have an AN bung here and here, I believe. Well, like, well an AN bung welded onto the timing cover. Okay. And then I, on this side, all I had to do was there's the two, um, like tall perches, one of them had like an expanding dowel pin in them. I just put the timing cover in a bridge port. You can see I just kind of cut it all flush on this side. Okay. Just cut it flush to this like mounting surface. That way this didn't pass off the cushion out. Then the same on this side. There was these ribs here that must have just been in the casting. And I just cut all of those off here. This wasn't really necessary in hindsight. Just like this section right where that wants to go. Gotcha. And then when the belt breaks, it always comes to driver's side, passenger side. I'm trying to remember. They don't want to go this way, so you would have like. So we're going to mount the alternator over here. I'm uh, assuming. That's then? kind of what we were thinking. Yeah, we haven't really made it that far, but just kind of looking at what we have to bolt it to. Right. Um, and then yeah, there'll be a belt guard that usually has like a long, just like a aluminum. Yeah, that's plate. right. On skin, he's all the way down this side. Yep, okay. Come down to here, and then we have a. There'll be like a little. It's kind of like a long piece with a slot in it, and it'll slide into this piece, slide into here, and then uh, we do have another one that goes right here, uh, but I, I guess that's somewhat optional. Okay. I'm not really sure. Because what water, I'm trying to remember where the water is on these. I think it's... Okay. I know this is one of them right here. Okay. I'm not sure if it's in or out, but we put this clearance in here for that, and then I'm really not sure. I want to say that's that small, but it's small. oh, maybe it's a slit. Is that? That's possible. Yeah. Uh, let me look at this back issue. We welded some AN bumps on it before. Yeah. So it looks like I mean water there, there out there so that's what
so here's the other block that just got back from heat treat so they're doing the uh they're doing the bores on that actually before it gets machined so this had to go to heat treat and basically you had to get it to where i think it's i don't know if it's six inches that uh the heat treat will penetrate so but this one's back so literally just rough cut hopefully still gonna look like that other one and you can what size pistons are going in those holes? That's gonna be a stroker. You ain't kidding. That's a high river. You should run some RPM with that and there ain't no way you're ever gonna crack that. <laughs> All right, let's measure real quick and see what our location is. Okay. All right. We got yeah. point four to go. The sack's damn near touching. Yes. Quarter inch left. Quarter inch left. Are we going to make it? Yeah, she's about ready to touch. Ah, we'll be fine. Oh, oh God. Got locked. I remember we were trying to do the math and we're like, boy, that's going to be close. And look at the look at the other end. Other end. Oh, shit. Well, the bar is nice and clean. It's a loud tool. That's what she said. Oh, look at the Yeah. Please. You know you were supposed to let the load go while you were still in there, Polly. It's dripping out of his mouth. Race this weekend. Sack drove 1,500 miles from Wyoming to get here, and then he came with his normal list of like two or three things that needs to be done to his car to be ready. That list turned into 34, I think, as of last night. Things. And it's ever expanding, but we cut him off and we won't let him talk about anything else. But but he's going a bigger turbo, so he said he will have everything cut, ready to go, and all Bobby has to do is weld when he gets here. Well, this game is a fully assembled car that he drove in here when he got here, and then he started disassembling it this morning. I did weld the, the cone to the V band, then we cut it down, and now it's tacked to the intercooler, and now we're just doing a quick check to make sure everything lines up and fits the way we want it and lo and behold it, don't. it doesn't fit <laughs> <laughs> so that's sax car but changes to the cowboy up he put what'd you do to it uh on my last outing i bent all eight rods so we had to put rods in it and up the compression one point, gained two cubic inches. Oh wow. <laughs> it is two horsepower. One horsepower per cube. We're taking it all right now. And so 376, so he's up to 376 horsepower. Yep. His old turbo he didn't think could actually blow the thing up, so he went to a oh, bigger one to make sure that he could. So but so he's testing tomorrow, so that'll be big oh, testing day tomorrow, so that'll be on that. And then more progression with Aiden's car. Sick Knight's coming up here in two, three weeks. So we got the NMCA race this week, the shootout. We got PDRA shootout next weekend uh, down in Virginia. So we're US 131 this weekend, uh, PDRA, uh, Virginia Motorsports Park next weekend. And then Sick Knight's coming up August 10th through the 12th, we're actually doing uh, a day of the pizza cruise so wednesday the whatever the day is wednesday that week pizza cruise at sick pizza thursday we're doing a shootout at Milan dragway just more of a fun shootout testing for roadkill nights which is that saturday so that and a barbecue and then on friday we're going to do um six skids so m1 concourse they're going to let us do aussie style burnouts on the skid pad so we got concrete barriers coming in we got the the blazer back there that we're going to do the burnouts in that i'll do the burnouts in but we got multiple other people coming so uh doug cook they're bringing the bald regal up uh weston chaplin's coming up and bringing the car uh a lot of other people so and all that's starting to fill in so if you want tickets for that definitely get over to the website and get your tickets for that the the golden ticket so the new issue of the magazine is coming out it's at print right now so it will ship out here in the next few weeks we are doing for sick week sick week to be announced, dates, location, yada, yada, yada. Can't tell you any of that details yet, but I can tell you Sick Week 2023 is coming. So 
and know that we already have 100 people that were the fastest 100 at Sick Week from last year that get auto entries to be able to get into the event. We also have the winners of the other events that have happened, Rocky Mountain Race Week, Midwest Drags, uh, the North Carolina Drag Cruise, there'll be the Miles of Mayhem, all these other drag and drive events that the winners get an entry in. So you take all those away and that pot of entries that to get into Sick Week is going to be even less than it was last year when it sold out in three minutes. So, um, so one thing we're doing is any current subscriber to the magazine, that means all the people that are currently subscribed, any new subscribers that are subscribed and active before the next issue ships, will get a chance. We're sending out four golden tickets, random magazines to random people. We'll get an entry, um, an entry, a free entry for Sick Week uh, 2023. It can be used either for Sick Week or Sick Ward if you are not a Sick Week participant. Um, or don't have a car that you're doing sick weekend. But so four random subscribers will get a free entry and it's the golden, the sick golden ticket will be in those magazines and that's a way to get in because as quick as it sells out, as many people want to go, that is going to be, just like American Express says, it will be priceless, that ticket. It'll be right here, here, but we'll see. Uh, that's what I got for We're going out testing tomorrow, so then there'll be more updates on that stuff. We got 2.0 over there. I got to get that. Switched over methanol and ready to go to the track tomorrow. Um, Sack will be there. Not sure else will be there, but that's what we got, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.